Good morning, all. Tony Sycamore here, bringing to you a video review of the key charts of interest for the week ahead, starting on the 22nd of February. Let's dive straight in and look at the S&P 500 on the weekly chart. The key feature for me in the S&P 500 last week was the formation of this little red candle, which after making new highs, then closed back within this trend channel resistance. Potentially, we're starting to look at a false break. What are the levels of interest for a possible false break trigger? Well, in the initial instance, we have some lows coming in last week around 38.75-ish, 38.80-ish. And then we have some highs in January coming in around 38.60-ish over here. You can see these highs. So this is the key barometer of support for me. While the S&P remains above there, there is a possibility of another push high up towards 4,000. We'll give that the benefit of the doubt. However, if the S&P was to break and close below these blue lines, which is that key support zone we've mentioned, I think we'll be looking at the S&P retesting uh, re this uptrend support uh, coming from November. So about a, a three or four month uptrend support coming in around 37.20. In terms of the ASX 200, the local market, the price action on Friday was pretty soggy and potentially that gave us a little bit of a, a preemptive look into what was gonna happen into the US equity market on Friday night. You can see the ASX 200 finished down around 1.3%. There was no real bad news out on Friday. Commodities remained very strong. Retail sales was a little bit weaker, but people were looking at the lockdowns in Victoria and also in Queensland and thinking, well, hard to spend money when you're in lockdown. Um, so I think there should have been an element of looking through that lockdown affected data, but nonetheless, the ASX 200 has again, appeared to have rejected the top of this trend channel resistance. This starts in late November, uh, picks up this 39.38 high, and then you could possibly see a test of this 6,700 into the early part of this week. Below 6,700, well, you can see that we have horizontal support coming in around 6,500-ish. And that would be my target if 6,700 was to break. Moving along to currencies now, the Euro USD. Uh, it rejected this 121.70 area before finding support last week ahead of this uptrend support coming from the 116.02 low. Rebounded only as far as 121.50, uh, 121.50-ish before closing the week around 121.15. For the week ahead, there is obviously some trend line resistance coming in on the top side and some trend line support coming in on the downside. But what is of interest to me is this inverted head and shoulders bottoming pattern here, left shoulder the head and the right shoulder over here. And that would be triggered if the euro was to break above 121.70-ish, in which case I could see a test of this 123.50 high from early January. Until that level breaks, however, we do need to allow for more corrective price action in this area here. Turning now to the dollar yen. Now, dollar yen is a position I've had on for the better part of a month up until this bar here last week and also here as well. Uh, the, the premise of the trade, the long trade, was the fact that we were breaking higher and I thought this move looked impulsive. Uh, I was able to sell a little bit up here and then weathered the pullback down towards this 100 day moving average, 104.40ish, as well as the uptrend support. But at the very heart of this analysis, we were looking for a five wave rally and that's exactly what we got, which is in theory, the sign of the first indication of a change in trend. So in that context, I now want to be a buyer because I'm seeing the trend with potential up towards 108. So I'm looking to be a buyer into this region here. Turning to commodities, silver. Uh, the $30.15 spike high appears to have completed a five-way rally. You can see the one, two, uh, three, and then all this corrective price action through here was a wave four. Wave five, the $30.15 high. I would like to see a pullback to be a buyer of silver. Alternatively, I would be a buyer on a break higher, looking for a retest of this 30.15 high. Finally this week, a look at Bitcoin. And our premises at the start of the year was that we were looking at a wave for pullback towards 28,000 and it tagged it very neatly before pushing up above this 42,000 high from early January. This was confirmation that wave four was complete and that wave five was underway. In that instance, we're looking for a test and break of 50,000. Well, you get that test of 50,000 around this area here, and then it pushed back up to 56,000. I am not going to call the end of this Bitcoin trend just because we've got a five-wave rally. You can see the five waves here quite clearly 
Uh, I think you have to allow the upside further room to develop. There's so much interest in this market at the moment, but I would be very, very uh, strict about where I put my reassessment level. And I wouldn't want to see it going back through 42,000, which is that high from January. I hope you've enjoyed today's video analysis. If you are interested more about the trade ideas which are contained in this video, please check out our website for more details and our reports.